Greetings, my friends. Brother Joey here once again for another Signs of the Times report. And in this report, I want to update the Syria situation. And we're going to look at all kinds of recent events uh, in light of something I've often talked about in the past, but it's been a while. The end time prophecies on the destruction of Damascus by the prophets uh, Jeremiah and Isaiah in the Old Testament. And of course, they prophesied uh, concerning Damascus. Jeremiah prophesied in Jeremiah 49 that Damascus would be waxed feeble and that fear and anguish would seize and overtake the city as a woman in labor. Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 17, the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city and it shall become a ruinous heap. And when you're following what's going on in Syria, you can see how these... Uh, uh, this war in Syria uh, that continues to escalate despite all the peace talks being held uh, is certainly foreshadowing these end time prophecies of Jeremiah and Isaiah. Now, the first piece uh, I, I want to show you here is actually talking about the a fresh round of Syrian peace talks that have been held in the uh, capital of Kazakhstan there in Astana and uh, it says here that uh, Thursday's discussions which were held behind closed doors are viewed as a warm-up in the run-up to a separate round of UN-led talks on the Syrian crisis slated to be held in the city of Geneva in Switzerland and uh, so we've seen that uh, the, these Peace talks in Astana as well as in Geneva passed. The, the, the talks in Geneva were on February the 23rd, uh, so a few weeks ago. And uh, still, battles rage on, as we're going to see here. As we see here, uh, in which uh, a report surfaced that the United Nations has warned of a humanitarian catastrophe in Syria due to a deliberate uh, due to deliberate acts of sabotage by Daesh terrorists targeting a key dam and U.S.-led coalition air raids on the facility. Uh, so they're, they're warning of a humanitarian catastrophe over there due to uh, deliberate acts of sabotage on a particular uh, dam. Uh, and, of course, they're combining that with the U.S.-led coalition air raids uh, on the facility. And uh, that's just one aspect of the chaos uh, engulfing Syria and has been engulfing Syria for many years now, for over six years. Or I believe about six years this conflict has been raging on. Meanwhile, a Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has once again reiterated his claims that uh, his government is determined to liberate, as he says, every single inch of Syria held by foreign-backed militants uh, and, and another uh, uh, symbol of the fact that this war uh, will continue to rage on here. And uh, of course the Russian airstrikes continued as the Russian Air Task Force uh, targeted militants in Syria's Aleppo. In other news, uh, Saudi Arabia came out and stated that they are ready to support the United States in its so-called war against the Daesh Takfiri terrorists, a terrorist group in Syria by sending ground troops and special forces to the war-torn Arab country. Saudi Foreign Minister Adel al-Jubir made the remarks in an exclusive interview apparently with the German newspaper and uh, this was published on Monday and, and he added that uh, there were consolations with the Americans to find out what the plan is and what uh, they would need to implement it. He also stated that along with Riyadh, other Persian Gulf Arab countries uh, were also ready to allocate forces to fight on the U.S. side without giving further details about the potential uh, military initiative. And if you remember, I did a video not too long ago where uh, Saudi Arabia formed a 34-nation uh, Islamic military alliance that many are calling the Muslim NATO and I believe that uh, coalition now is uh, up to 57 
uh, nations, and it's an Islamic military alliance. Uh, so certainly uh, uh, worth keeping an eye on that alliance and, and what uh, they do is I believe they'll play an integral part in end time Bible prophecy and I'll talk about that in another video to come but here we see you know things in Syria completely uh, uh, unstable despite all these peace talks being held and despite these uh, all this politician talk uh, uh, by the UN and all these other corrupt organizations trying to say that everything's fine while civil war rages on and innocent uh, civilians are being killed in this and and of course you know, it is a sign of the times, my friends. We, we, you know, Dam Damascus shall become a ruinous heap and shall be waxed feeble according to Jeremiah and Isaiah's end time prophecies. And so it's worth keeping an eye on these things. And so we go from uh, Saudi Arabia and, and potential other uh, Arab countries, uh, part of this Islamic military alliance, getting ready to send troops to Syria. Uh, we, we've just seen a report that uh, um, the United States is getting ready to send troops over there. Uh, the Russian Air Task Force is dropping bombs over there. And as we're going to see in this next piece, uh, the Israeli warplanes uh, uh, bombarded the military positions outside, just outside of Damascus, according to this next report here which states that Israeli military aircraft uh, reportedly carried out an overnight airstrike against Syrian army positions in the strategic and mountainous uh, Kalamun region, which lies north of the capital Damascus along the border with neighboring Lebanon. Then we had the top United States commander for the Middle East come out and say that more American troops may be needed in Syria. And this is the report I was re referring to earlier. Uh, and he said more troops are needed in Syria to step up the so-called campaign against the uh, Takfiri Daesh terrorist group in the war-torn country. Uh, General Joseph L. Vodal, the head of the U.S. Central Command, and uh, he made the announcement on Wednesday while speaking to reporters accompanying him on a trip to the Middle East region. And, of course, it's no surprise that the uh, Pentagon would be walking in lockstep with that statement if he come out and said that. And in a proposal presented to the White House, the Pentagon has apparently called for a significant increase in U.S. military engagement in Syria, including more special ops forces, uh, attack helicopters, and artillery, uh, U.S. officials are reporting. And as we see... The ongoing uh, war, these bombings, airstrikes in Syria continue to rattle the Geneva peace talks and efforts to uh, solve this Syrian crisis. We also had uh, Russia send one of its cutting-edge frigates to the Syrian shores. As we see here, this piece uh, talks about uh, and it mentions uh, that... Uh, Admiral Grigovorich departed a Sevastopol Crimea port to join the Russian fleet stationed in the Mediterranean Sea, according to the Russian Ministry of Defense. The frigate was deployed in November 2016 to launch caliber cruise missiles on terror cells operating within Syrian borders. However, they're saying that... Uh, this uh, frigate is being not being sent there to take out targets in Syria, but uh, it's going to be right there floating along the shores. And this is the one that was deployed in November of 2016 to launch caliber cruise missiles on terror cells, as it, I just read you here, uh, in uh, operating uh, within Syrian borders. Sticking uh, with the Russian theme for this next piece here, which talks about... Uh, uh, how Russian Air Force has uh, bombed a site close to U.S. troops in Syria, and this apparently happened on Tuesday, and uh, a near miss in the fog of war against the Islamic State, though the strikes still hit U.S.-backed forces, apparently. Uh, U.S. Lieutenant Army General S Stephen Townsend said Wednesday the incident occurred after Russian pilots 
began bombing what they thought were ISIS fighters in a bunch of villages in northern Syria. They ended up hitting forces with the U.S.-backed Syrian Arab coalition. And it says that the U.S. troops were several miles away, and the bombing stopped after U.S. officials made quick calls to uh, uh, deconfliction channels, of course, uh, Townsend reported. And he's the commander of Operation Inherent Resolve, the joint operation to stop ISIS in Iraq and Syria. And uh, so we see here that the general says that Russia bombed a site uh, near U.S. forces in Syria, and uh, so you wonder how many more times stuff like this can happen before uh, an accident, they'll claim, uh, whatever side carries it out, all of a sudden they're hitting each other's troops. We know they're already at war with one another uh, in this area. One's for uh, with the Syrian government troops, and the other one claims to be uh, uh, funding pro-rebel groups which there's other rebel groups, apparently, that are fighting against the Syrian government, but then there's this separate rebel group. But at the end of the day, this is the reason why you're not seeing uh, U.S. and Russia coordinating uh, in Syria, because at the end of the day, there's a greater agenda uh, beyond uh, what we can imagine. But the Word of God tells us exactly what will happen. We're going to be talking a lot about that in videos to come. But, I mean, we continue to see the reports of the chaos in the region, as uh, this headline reads here. And it talks about how um, armed clashes between the Free Syrian Army and the Syrian Democratic Forces show no signs of abating in and near the northern Syrian city of Mambij, according to Hidar Membik, the commander of the Mambij Military Council, and what he told a Turkey news agency. Uh, so I'll link you up with this report, along with all the others, of course, in the description box below the video, as usual. Apparently, it's not only Saudi Arabia and their fellow Arab countries that are debating uh, putting more troops into Syria. We've also seen, as I showed you, uh, the United States, uh, Pentagon reports... Uh, you know, a request, putting in requests to the White House to put more troops in Syria as well. And here we see, uh, according to this piece from the National Post, that uh, Canadian forces are studying their options uh, for a potential Syrian operation, even including ground troops, as uh, their uh, current mission racks up, uh, or wraps up, excuse me, over in the Iraqi city of Mosul. And this last piece here I'm going to uh, close with is uh, talking about how apparently, now who knows whether there's any uh, substance to these claims. We've seen them claim weapons of mass destruction being held by people before falsely. However, um, they're claiming now, it says here, ignoring the United Nations, Russia and Assad continue Syrian chemical weapons and bombing attacks which are being labeled war crimes. So they're, they're, they're accusing the, the Russians and the Syrian government of using chemical weapons and, and uh, bomb attacks, and they're labeling it war crimes. And this is just another massive sign of how this is only intensifying, my friends, as the wars and rumors of wars continue that Jesus talked about as signs of the times that would precede his second coming. And we're seeing it. We're seeing the distress of nations with perplexity upon the earth, as Jesus said in Luke 21, 25. And my friends, I just pray that you're right with the Lord today. Because at the end of the day, you know, it says in the holy word of God that every man will be without excuse when they're standing before the judgment seat and looking on into eternity. And eternity is a long time, my friends, forever. It's timeless. So understand that the most important decision that you can make is to see the signs and repent of your sins and get into the gospel, which is the power of salvation, and get born again through the Holy Spirit of God, through faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray that you're one of the few who find it today. 
This is Brother Joey signing off. Until next time, my friends, God bless each and every one of you in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Greetings, my friends. Brother Joey here once again for another Signs of the Times report. And in this report, I want to update the Syria situation. And we're going to look at all kinds of real time prophecies of Jeremiah and Isaiah. Now, the first piece uh, I want to show you here is actually talking about the a fresh round of Syrian peace talks that have been held in the uh, capital of Kazakhstan there in Astana. And uh, this heap. And when you're following what's going on in Syria, you can see how these uh, uh, this war in Syria uh, that continues to escalate despite all the peace talks being held uh, is certainly foreshadowing these Jeremiah 49 that Damascus would be waxed feeble and that fear and anguish would seize and overtake the city as a woman in labor. Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 17, the burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall become a ruin. Recent events, uh, in light of something I've often talked about in the past, but it's been a while, the end time prophecies on the destruction of Damascus by the prophets of uh, Jeremiah and Isaiah in the Old Testament. And of course, they prophesied uh, concerning Damascus. Jeremiah prophesied in 